comrades, fellow South Africans, I greet you all in the name of the glorious movement of our people, the African National Congress. I wish to welcome you to this birthday celebration of the ANC. And comrades, as you can see, this year we started our celebrations on time. We did not delay in starting our celebrations. And this is a clear signal that is in door Ziashinja Forty Zishinchile. The National Executive Committee at its first meeting also started on time, right on the dot. Nelson Mandela would have been very pleased to see that in starting our things on time, we respect each other, we respect our movement, and we respect our people. From now on, we want a new culture to spread around our movement and our country. When we say we will start a meeting at a particular time, that meeting must start without fail. That is what the ANC should be showing as an example going forward. Today, we especially welcome President Uhuru Kenyatta and his delegation from the Jubilee Party. They are here to extend fraternal greetings to us, but also to extend fraternal relations between the people of South Africa and the people of Kenya. This year, we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the birth of one of the greatest sons of our country and greatest leaders this country, this continent, and the world has ever seen. Nelson Kholithatha Mandela. We shall make it a point that we draw lessons and inspiration from his life as we confront the challenge of the present moment. We shall use this historic occasion to unite, to rebuild, and to renew his movement, the movement that he dedicated his life and intensify our work to build the free and equitable society for which he suffered so much for and for which he fought a gallant battle. This year, we shall intensify our efforts to realize Madiba's vision of a united South Africa in which all live in peace with equal rights and opportunities. The ANC's 54th National Conference which met in Johannesburg last month, recognized that the movement has become deeply divided through factionalism, through patronage, through corruption, and through co competition for resources. The leaders of your movement were continuously in conflict. Structures of the movement we found that they had been weakened and the confidence of the people of our country had actually been eroded. We found that this had led to a social distance between the elected leaders and the electorate and had damaged the bond between the ANC and the masses of our people. Now, having realized all this, the delegates that you sent to conference, the almost 5,000 delegates 
that you sent to Johannesburg at Nazareth decided that the ANC, your ANC, should embark with immediate effect on a far-reaching program of organization rebuilding. It must immediately embark on a process of engendering unity. And it should not be unity for unity's sake, but it must be unity in action. It must be the unity that all and sundry will look at and say, yes, the ANC has become united. The conference also decided that we want to embark on a program of renewal. We must renew our organization and we must begin to do things differently. African National Congress. The conference also decided that we should make the African National Congress a more effective instrument, instrument of social and economic change and to bring about change in the lives of our people. Conference also decided that divisions amongst us must come to an end and that those divisions must end now and not later. This will also improve extensive engagement with our alliance. Conference also said we must strengthen the alliance because this is still an alliance that is still fit for the fight. It is an alliance that must be strengthened in all ways. And this alliance must also work with the mass democratic movement and with organized civil society. We will reach out to all sectors where our people are organized and engage also the veterans of our movement to ensure that our veterans, and there are many of them throughout the country, that they must play a meaningful role in rebuilding the African National Congress and restoring our movement to its values. We have, over the last 24 years, qualitatively advanced the National Democratic Revolution. We have made significant progress in forging a unitary democratic state founded on a constitution with guarantees, which guarantees equal rights for all. We have established enduring democratic institutions that are able to champion the will of our people. We have directed public resources towards tackling poverty. We have built houses for the poor in our country. We have provided electricity and water to millions of households in our country. And we have made efforts in redistributing, redistributing land. We have also improved education and health. We are the only country on the African continent which has an extensive social program that touches the lives of more than 17 million people. This is the work that has been done by your African National Congress. Guided by the National Development Plan, we are going to restore our focus, re restore our focus on building an economy in which all South Africans can flourish an economy which benefits the people of our country as a whole, rather than just to benefit a few privileged individuals and families in our country. We want an economy that will benefit all of us and whose economic spread will be felt 
and seen and touched by all. We seek an open, dynamic economy that has opportunities for all, especially young people and women in our country, an economy that pursues higher productivity, creates jobs, pays better wages, and improves the quality of life of all our citizens. Our vision is an economy that encourages and welcomes investment. We must not have an economy that discourages and chases away investors from investing in South Africa. As we stand here, we say South Africa is open for investment and we invite all investors from all over the world to come to South Africa to invest in our country so that we can grow our economy, so that we can create jobs, so that we can end poverty, so that we can reduce inequality and increase the number of people who are involved, who are employed. We must have an economy that offers policy certainty and addresses barriers that inhibit investment, growth, as well as social inclusion. We are going to make sure who will be the first in line to benefit from this project of free education, which project will be implemented on a gradual basis as we find money, as we mobilize resources, as we accumulate more and more money, we are going to realize this historic objective. This historic decision, which vindicates many decades of struggle for free education for the poor, will be implemented in a phased approach to ensure sustainability of our government's finances. South Africa needs to pursue a multifaceted growth strategy. We are also going to make all efforts to ensure that we create jobs for the young people in our country. Already this year, we are going to be finalizing all the arrangements to create up to one million job opportunities for the young people of our country and will be implemented on a three-year cycle. This we do because of our deep commitment to the young people of our country who are the future of this country. The concentration of ownership of our economy in the hands of a wide minority constrains sustainable growth and transformation. We will work to change the ownership structure and patterns of our economy through, among other things, ensuring access to and ownership of financial institutions by black people, by young people, and by women in our country. State procurement and the award of con uh, concessions Sitetang estate procurement, go ba uhulumeni way to at both national, at provincial, and at local government level procures many goods and services. And we are saying we are going to use the procurement process as a tool, as an enabling tool to empower our people to make sure that our people are properly empowered. Comrades, 
This renewed African National Congress is prepared and determined to make sure that our people are the ones who benefit from every procurement process that our government will be dishing out. Through targeted investment, through improved infrastructure, and the creation of a conducive regulatory environment, more township and rural areas can become sites of manufacturing and the expansion of the services industry. We want our townships to be nodes and centers of economic activity. We want our rural areas also to be nodes of economic activity where agricultural production will be at a high level. We are pleased that agreement has been reached on the national minimum wage, which will be implemented on the 1st of May in 2018. And on the 1st of May, we want all our people, all workers, to come here to come and celebrate May Day so that when we launch the national minimum wage, our working class people, our working people must also be here. While the starting minimum wage is not a living wage, it will immediately improve the lives of as many as 6.6 .6 million low-paid workers and establish a platform for further measures to reduce income inequality. The 54th Conference decided that the historic injustice of land dispossession needs to be addressed with greater urgency. There was overwhelming support at the conference that the ANC must pursue the expropriation of land without compensation. This will be done, comrades, in a manner that does not impede but promotes economic development. It will be done in a manner that does not impede but advances agricultural production and also takes forward our food security process and initiatives. We will also need to address the challenge of land in the urban areas. Ritswanezi Hori, Rilibele, Matata, Abat Baruna, Bakopanalona, Hababata, Lefati Lahua, Hadintu. Right now, in our urban areas, there is a shortage of land. And our government owns a lot of land through various departments, through various municipalities. And we say we want that land to be released so that our people should have places to build their homes, to build their houses. We need to act with urgency and purpose to restore our state-owned enterprises so that they become drivers of economic growth and development. Several of our state-owned enterprises are in financial distress and they've experienced serious governance lapses and they are not in a position to effectively deliver on their mandate. These challenges have been exacerbated by state capture through which billions of rands have been illegally diverted to individuals Corruption in state-owned enterprises and other public institutions have undermined our government's programs to address poverty and unemployment, and they have weakened those institutions. We want those state-owned enterprises, enterprises such as ESCOM, such as PRASA, such as Transnet, to be state-owned enterprises that we can all be proud of. The ANC, therefore, welcomes the announcement by President Jacob Zuma 
on the establishment of a commission of inquiry in, the, in line with the public protector's report on state capture. See, I'm not a president way to Oguti, I am the commission, you know the commission, which will take us to the bottom of what has been happening. And we say thank you that this commission is to be appointed. Corruption and collusion and other criminal activity in the private sector must be, brought, must be fought with equal diligence and determination. So even in the private sector, we say corruption must come to an end. And in the private sector, they decorate it. They call it collusion. They call it uh, financial irregularities. They call it corrections and all those things. It is the same thing. It is corruption, and we want all that to come to an end as well. We should always have confidence in our intelligence services, always have confidence in our police, always have confidence in our prosecutorial authorities, but they must act without favor. They must act without prejudice. They must act to advance the interests of our people and not the interests of some few individuals in our country. We undertake as the first task of our movement a deliberate program of organizational renewal that decisively addresses problems of division within our ranks and dysfunction within our ranks African National Congress. That is our whole year task. We must engage in the task of uniting our movement right at branch level, at zonal level, at sub-regional level, at regional level, at provincial level and national level, we must actively all be involved in a process of uniting our movement. In fact, I would say, if there is anyone amongst us who participates in acts of disunity, we must immediately take them on and ask them a question Uguti, comrade, why are you doing things that will divide the African National Congress? We, as the top six officials, have given ourselves the task that we are going, as each one of us, we are going to be uniting the African National Congress, and we are going to do so in action. We have also said we will desist from doing anything that will divide the ANC. We have also said if any leader in the ANC does or says anything that divides this great movement, we will call them to Lutuli House and say, why are you dividing the African National Congress? The ANC will work to renew with renewed determination to unite all South Africans regardless of race, class, or affiliation around a shared vision of fundamental transformation. We need to restore the unity of purpose and sense of common destiny that was forged under the leadership of Nelson Mandela. We shall mobilize all social partners in particular, government, labor, business behind the economic recovery plan that South Africa needs. The urgency of this task is underlined by low levels of growth, low levels of job creation, as well as contrained public finances, ratings downgrades, 
and corruption which undermine efforts to tackle poverty and inequality. It is only Makaban, through working together in pursuit of a common objective, underpinned by mutual respect, by mutual trust, that we shall be able to turn our economy around. We are going to confront corruption and state capture in all its forms and ramifications. In addition to the establishment of this commission of inquiry into state capture, the investigation and prosecution of those who are responsible will be given a top priority. Mechanisms for the appointment of individuals to senior government positions, to state-owned entities and law enforcement agencies must be strengthened to improve the transparency to prevent undue influence and ensure adequate vetting of candidates. We will work to restore the credibility of our public institutions, including, as I said, state-owned enterprises. As part of the work that is needed to improve access to relevant quality education, we will implement this project of ensuring that our young people, particularly at higher education, do get the education that they deserve and we will do so on a sustainable basis. The renewal of the African National Congress, the unity of the ANC can only be achieved if we all work together in our structures. This is when we need to hold hands together and to sing in unison as we sing Oliver Tambo's song and we say Oliver Tambo Ba Misanda say to hold our hand as you did in the past because it was when Oliver Tambo was holding our hand that we were able to defeat the demon of apartheid. Because your spirit must be amongst us. Now Nelson Holita Mandela, Siagbiza, Sitama Tambo Wako, Magashugume, Abelapa, Pagatguetu, Umoya Wako, Ungen, Apa Guti, Sisonke, Singabantu, Balapa, Mzanzi, Africa, Oliver Tambo, Bambi Santa, say. Oh.